Hi, everyone. Welcome to Dean's Chat, where we discuss all things podiatric medicine. My name is Dr. Jeffrey Jensen. I'm the Dean at the Arizona College of Podiatric Medicine and host of the Dean's Chat podcast. Today, I'd like to introduce my co-host, Mark Rademacher. He's a third-year student at the Arizona College of Podiatric Medicine. Welcome, Mark. Thanks for having me. Uh, very excited to be here in the spirit of the podcast. Thought I would wear my Jeff Probst survivor hat. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah, he's a self-described uh, survivor fanatic. So thank you for joining us, Mark. Thanks for having me. Our guest today, Dr. Joshua Wilder, is a successful young podiatric physician from Stone Mountain, Georgia. Uh, Joshua is a 2016 graduate of the Kent State University College of Podiatric Medicine, where he was also the valedictorian. He did his residency at West Penn Hospital in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and he did a fellowship in foot and ankle reconstructive surgery at Emory St. Joseph Hospital in Atlanta. Welcome, Dr. Wilder. Hello, hello. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Lovely to be on here. No, it's fantastic. And you know, on Dean's chat, we kind of have, have a fireside chat feel, so we go by first names. So Mark, Jeff, Joshua, we're in business. Absolutely. Sounds, Sounds good. good. So in Dr. Wilder's spare time, he competed in the Survivor season 44, which aired this past spring. And for the rest of this uh, podcast, I'm going to be talking about all things podiatric medicine. And my co-host, Mark Rademacher, is going to be talking about all things Survivor. How's that sound, guys? That's good. All right. I love it. So let, let's get started. Uh, Joshua, you know, you went to the Kent State College of Podiatric Medicine. How did you get interested in podiatry? Uh, so my uncle was a podiatrist, and he has a private practice in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So going into uh, to Pittsburgh and visiting them, I was always interested in medicine because of my my history. I had a kidney transplant at the age of nine, um, so I knew I wanted to go into that field. I just didn't know where. And him being a big motivator, inspiration for me, I was always wanted to be around him. So I played in his clinic a lot, and it stuck very hard. You know, there's so many different avenues and venues you can go with podiatry, be it sports medicine diabetic care, reconstruction, et cetera. So it, uh, he's the whole reason I decided to go that route. Oh, that's fantastic. You know, kidney transplants are, are close to the Jensen family's heart because my daughter-in-law is a kidney transplant patient. That is fantastic. Oh my gosh. And how, how far is she out? So she's over 10 years now and she's so compliant on her medication regimen and she works for the national kidney foundation actually. And, uh, my son, Steve and, and Haley just had their second baby. So we have two, two grandkids and her kidney's doing well so far. And that's amazing. After till 10 years, that's the average mark of a healthy transplantation. And oh, she's wow. over that. that. That's amazing. That's fantastic. It's true. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. We're so excited for her. And, um, you know, it's a challenge, as you know. So, you know, Joshua, I was going to ask you, you know, with your health concerns and, you know, you did your top of the class in, in podiatric medical school. You did one of the top residency programs in the country. You've done a fellowship training. How on earth did you find time to participate on Survivor? Oh, it wasn't easy. Let me tell you that. <laughs> First of all, I really didn't think I could ever be on the show. You know, I never applied because of med school and residency and fellowship because you're so busy. We never really have time for ourselves. And then with my past medical history, I never knew if I could actually survive on Survivor. <laughs> um, but I spoke to all of my physicians, my nephrologists, my gastroenterologists, um, my primary care doctor, and they all said I could do this if I really wanted to. There were just certain precautions I had to um, look into. And this was right after COVID when all this happened. So I was still really slow in clinic. I was building up my, um, my surgical cases and I just decided to apply. You know, I was like, why not? I'm in the best shape of my life. You know, everything's going well. Let's try it. Let's do it once in a lifetime. And I've always watched the survivor show. I've always loved it. It's been inspirational, you know, just watching these people, um, survive on an Island for 39 to 23 days now because of COVID. Um, so I just decided to take the plunge and apply. I saw Jeff Probst get on the TV and say, hey, you know, do it. And I did. And it stuck. And I stuck, kept getting those calls and kept getting those calls. And they decided to take me. And it, here we are. Wow, what an amazing story. So I'm going to pass the baton to Mark to talk about the Survivor show. Uh, Mark, take it from here. Sounds good. I'm ready. <laughs> Uh, thanks for coming on to the podcast. I'm so excited to talk to you because, you know, as he said, I'm survivor fanatic and a future podiatrist. So it's kind of surreal that I get to be uh, having a conversation with you today. 
hey, this is awesome, man. Hey, maybe you're a future survivor yourself. You never, never know. Oh, oh, we'll get to that. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know that uh, everyone who's listening is as obsessed with the show as the two of us are. So do you think you could describe just the basic premise of Survivor for them? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So Survivor is um, basically a reality show that's Emmy nominated. I want to put that in there uh, <laughs> where they take 18 strangers, separate them into three different tribes of six and leave them stranded alone on three different beaches. During that time frame, these three different tribes need to come up with a strategy um, to work together with you know, complete strangers and how to survive. So you have to build your own shelter, find your own food, um, make sure that you guys are all getting along without eating, sleeping, and still tr strategizing on how to make alliances and who's going to go home if you get sent to tribal council. And what tribal council is, is basically a uh, voting uh, arena where you vote each other out based on how you do through the challenges throughout the game. And throughout the game of 23 days, you are um, being challenged against one another, each tribe, um, for different immunity challenges, for different uh, rewards. And if you lose, then you get sent to this tribal council where you vote each other off. So it's a very intense, uh, fast-paced game over 23 days. Yeah, I can imagine. Oh, my goodness. So as someone, as I mentioned, I, I have applied for the show and I would love to get on one day. Maybe we'll have to talk uh, after the podcast, but um, oh, yeah. Absolutely. I, so I have a little bit of a, an idea of the amount of hunger and sleep deprivation at a fraction of what it takes to actually go on the show. But even knowing that, can you talk about what makes someone crazy enough to want to do something like this? <laughs> Oh, man. So I've always been an adventure fanatic ever since my kidney transplant. You know, um, my uh, kidney donor, Kristen Regal, she died at the age of 15 from a car accident. She never got to experience life. So ever since that happened and I got this kidney, it's always made me hungry to do adventurous things like Survivor, um, like, you know, um, jump out of airplane, like, like travel to different locations, things that you don't get to do on an everyday basis. And you only have one life to live. So for me, I'm living life for two. So I'm trying to live my life to the fullest and being on survivor, getting to experience Fiji, getting to experience, you know, doing these challenges and pushing your body to the limit was amazing. It was something that I never thought I could do. And the fact that I got the approval from all these different doctors and, you know, my family and all my support system. It just was something that I've always wanted to push myself to do. And now that I've done it, it's the best thing ever. And it's just changed me. So not only physically, but mentally as well for the good. It's been amazing, an amazing journey. That's so great to hear. Thank um, you. So what did you do to prep for the show? And would you change anything that you did now uh, looking back? I know one of the contestants on your season, um, his name is Carson and he, his prep was highlighted a lot and he talked about reading books about interpersonal connection and social strategy. And he practiced some of the puzzles that had been on before. Do you think some of that kind of prep work would have worked for you? Or do you think that it really varies between people who go on? Uh, both. I think it varies for sure, but I think the prep work for the puzzles is definitely <laughs> something that would have prepared me more. I didn't have a 3d printer, so um, <laughs> that would help. Uh, but I mean, there's various things that you can order, uh, different puzzles that, um, throughout the show. And a lot of it's nostalgic because you, I grew up watching these challenges and thinking back at it, it's like, Oh my God, I should have, you know, I should have practiced that puzzle. What am I <laughs> thinking? Uh, but I did a lot of, um, like Sudoku puzzles where you're like, um, but you're stressing your mental capacity, a lot of physicality, uh, things I did, um, obstacle course races just to prepare for the different challenges. Um, I learned how to fillet a fish, you know, from start to finish, learned how to crack open a coconut. And of course, if you're going to be on survivor, you have to learn how to make fire. Now, making it efficiently, that's something different, but in order to make fire, you only get flint and a machete. And so you got to make it work with those two um, items. So that's how I prepared. I wish I would have done more puzzle work, though. Sure. Yeah, that's exciting. Do you feel like uh, being a podiatrist and all the training leading up to that, do you feel like that helped you on the show at all? Uh, I think it did. I think it did because um, as podiatrists, we meet or our physicians, period, we meet people constantly, new people. And we only have 20 to 30 minutes to get to know them 
to come up with a diagnosis, to come up with a treatment, and then get allow them to trust you to do whatever treatment that you say based on your merit in that 20 to 30 minutes. So I think it would be, it behooved me because I knew how to talk to different people of different statues and uh, different uh, walks of life. So the social game came easy for me. Hmm. However, what I lacked was I was lying about my profession and lying about certain things about myself. Um, so if I didn't go that route, then I think I would have went a little bit farther. Okay. That was going to be my next question. I was, it was interesting to see, cause I think, uh, some of your reasoning for not wanting to tell people that you were a surgeon was it might put a target on your back. Can you talk about that a little more and what the thoughts that went into that? Of course, of course. So it's, I mean, it's historical that surgeons and doctors don't really do too well, or those who are, um, more financially, I guess, uh, prepared, if you will. I don't know. So if, if someone knew that I was um, a physician, they might think like, oh, okay, well, he's strategic. I don't really know if I want him on my team or he doesn't need the money. So let's just get him out now. Mm -hmm. um, plus my physicality always already put a target on my back. As you know, watching Survivor, those who are more physically endured or has a physical prowess, they don't make it past merge because, I mean, they're a physical threat. You want to get them out before that. Mm -hmm. um, so I already had that against me. If they knew I was a doctor, I would have that against me. And then I was trying to hide my medical history because I had a story. So if I took that all the way to the end, there's no way anyone could beat me because of what I've been through. So I didn't want an, anyone to know about my kidney transplant, about my total gastrectomy, about, you know, how I... Uh, how I grew up with all these uh, issues as a gay black man and how you have to maneuver through life to, you know, get to where you're going. And that's what survival was about. And so that's why I thought I could win and be all those other castaways. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm sure you get a lot of experiences like this too. But when I uh, tell people about survivor, I get a lot of people telling me that they think the show is fake or that it's rigged. So what, what could you say as someone who's been on it to, to prove them wrong? You know, I thought that too, you know, I thought going on, like, you know what, maybe they'll get a granola bar on the side, you know, when the cameras go off, I'll just ask them. Absolutely not. Not true. You don't eat anything. You have to fight for everything you do. I lost 40 pounds. The only wow. thing that we ate was um, coconuts, hermit crabs that we collected in the, in the morning and put them in a pot and you basically peel them like shrimp and then chew them, but you get no calories from that. Um, <laughs> fish that you had to go um, hunt for, which were like, 500 yards out into the water after you hit the reefs, which by the way, um, you exhaust a lot of energy trying to get a fish, you know, and you're trying to conserve your energy because you're not getting that caloric intake. Um, and then they have these little nuts that you had to find and you get, and it looks like a little, um, pistachio, but you only get uh, like a, a sunflower seeds worth of it. <laughs> so you're spending all this energy trying to get a little bit of caloric intake. And then you're doing these challenges and then you're trying to mentally get through all of the necessary um, challenges and what's going on with, you know, the backstabbing on your tribe and uh, through merge and everything. So it was a lot of energy expended and not a lot of caloric intake for that. So it, it's real, it, oh my totally goodness. real. <laughs> like I was passing out left and right because I didn't have enough calories. <laughs> really? Wow. Yes. Yes. It happened at least seven times. And it, it, the last time it got, it really scared me, especially with my medical condition. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we're really well taken care of out there. The, um, Dr. Will was amazing. He like checked us out before challenges, after challenges, just to make sure we're all up to par. Um, but that last time I passed out before I left, I, it scared me me, uh, in ways that I can't even speak of. So, um, it's real. It's, mm. you really don't sleep. You really don't eat <laughs> the mental, the mental drainage is real. No side, uh, granola bar for you. <laughs> <laughs> no side granola bar. You heard it here first. Um, <laughs> yeah. I can imagine that all of the hunger and the sleep deprivation would really take a toll on you, especially as you said, when you're trying to strategize and connect with people and figure out where everyone's head is at. Um, do you think that, being, I guess, hangry would, uh, affect your social strategy out there. Like were there personalities? I know that you, uh, you were on a tribe with two very strong personalities at one point and did that affect how you played the game at all? 
Yes, yes. We're going to try with Carolyn and Jam Jam. Yes. That was, uh, looking back at it now that you're, you know, you're mentally there, you're full. It's, it's funny. It's hilarious. <laughs> There's certain things you look back at and you just, the memories are there. But being out there, not eating, not sleeping, you know, being hangry, uh, you're, you're, your thread is very short. You know, I, I, I was very angry a lot of the times and <laughs> some of it is because of my condition. I didn't feel good out there at all. And it kind of translated on my face a lot. Um, and that's what the bitch face kind of thing came from. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, it definitely wore on you mentally and affected how you strategized because you had to kind of put that in check and check your emotions and go from there and just kind of try to think logically. And that's very, very hard when you're living with these people 24 seven and there's nowhere to go. So if going into it, I didn't think the mental capacity that you needed would drain me so much as it had. Mm. That's wild. Do you Mm -hmm. think that on some level, uh, all of the medical stuff that you've had to go through in your life, did it give you some sort of advantage in kind of dealing with not eating as much, not sleeping, you know, going through that fatigue? Do you think mentally you were kind of prepared for that in a way? Mentally, yes, because um, going through residency, uh, you don't really sleep or eat much anyway, because <laughs> you're always at the hospital, you're always on call. Uh, so in that regard, sleeping, eating, I, I kind of knew how to prepare in that regard. It was just the mental um, capacity of not having the caloric intake to remember certain things. For example, I showed Carolyn a uh, one of my idol um, papers, and I remember watching it back, and I showed Jam Jam and her the same idol uh paper from before and i don't remember not remembering showing her from before you know what i'm saying oh, like no. my neurons were just not firing like they should have because yeah. i would have known that <laughs> had i I've been eating and sleeping like i was so you forget different things and i remember talking to carson too about different restaurants in atlanta because he's also from here mm-hmm. and just randomly talking about a restaurant and then forgetting the name and forgetting what i was talking about completely it oh, happened wow. a lot yeah it's just one of the reasons is because you're not you're not getting the calories you need Oh my gosh, that's insane. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's a lot more than you would think about just sitting on your couch and watching it. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. And then when you were sitting and watching yourself back, were there a lot of parts to the show? Were the pieces kind of coming together as you watched? Because you're not aware of everything when you're out there, but as an audience member, you get to see everyone's point of view. Were there a lot of things that were kind of clarified for you as you were watching? Oh, absolutely. You know, and my mind was blown, especially when I was on Soka Tribe, like the amount of things that were being discussed that I wasn't aware about and how oblivious I was mostly (laughs) because I was just thinking too much about my own game that I wasn't really thinking about everyone else's game. And that's what I, how I shot myself in the foot. So (laughs) (laughs) yeah. That's funny. So I imagine, um, especially if you're winning challenges and not having to go to tribal council, um, and if there are down days, are there a lot of parts of the day that can get kind of boring out there with nothing to do? Or is it work, work, work all the time? Are you always talking to people? What do you do in your downtime out there? It's mostly if you're not looking for wood or looking for food or fish or like um, trying to stabilize your shelter from the storms and the rain, um, then you're strategizing. You're mm. you're talking to people. So your your mind, if your mind isn't always going, then you're physically always going. And then, of course, you're trying to fight um, the weather conditions. And if it's raining, you, there's not much you can do. So you're just sitting there cold and it, it's, you, you're always being drained and tested in some way. And the mental capacity, the mental game was stronger than I ever thought it was mm. physically. I thought I, I could do it for the most part, but mentally it was stressful. Yeah. I imagine so many layers of the onion for <laughs> everything going on. Oh man, it's a lot more than you think just yeah. watching it from, you know, the outside in and then watching it back. It's just amazing how many things I miss about being out there and other things you just, you just don't miss, you know, right. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't miss like sleeping on a bamboo, uh, trust. And I, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't think many people would. <laughs> no. So, um, how intense was the whole casting process to get in the show? I know you mentioned that you recorded a video to get on and then was it just a lot of phone calls back and forth? What was that like? It was a lot of phone calls back and forth. Um, the time zone difference because, uh, the casting and everything takes place in LA Mm -hmm. and I'm in Atlanta. So, um, having time for my patients and my surgeries and then making time for interviews, um, was difficult. I mean, it's something that you had to constantly stay on top of. Um, and interviews lasted like between 30 and 45 minutes. And there were not just one, there could be multiple. We were meeting different producers, executive Jeff. Um, there are timelines for submitting different, 
uh, things like um, we had to get an EKG. We had to get uh, 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 signed off by like a pr- like general practitioner by a certain time frame. <laughs> and as you know, like getting into a primary care doctor, that's not easy <laughs> to do in a certain amount of time frame. Um, so it was hard trying to do a full time job in this as well. And I mean, there have been multiple times I talked to my husband, like, my like, gosh, is this worth it? Like, am I on yet? Like, are we? <laughs> this is months and months. But still, no regrets from going on. Oh, no regrets. I would do it again in a heartbeat. Jeff, call me. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll have to make a podiatrist alliance if if I get on the show eventually, too. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Hey, Survivor loves podiatrist. Yeah, they clearly. Deshaun was on a few seasons ago. Yeah, they've they got everyone coming on now. So uh, did you speaking of Jeff, did you get to uh interact with him much off camera? Like what's he like, what's he like in person? That's so funny you say that. So the first time I met Jeff, I was actually in surgery because there was only a certain amount of time that I could meet with him. And I'm like, Jeff, I have surgery. I can't, I can't block this off. So he called in and phoned in and I was in an ankle fracture case. I'm just like, oh, Hey wow. Jeff, I got to call you back. And he was like, Whoa, that's so awesome. Like, I, I gotta go. You can't be here. <laughs> so, yeah. um, but side note, uh, Jeff is awesome. He's, he's, his energy is palpable. You know, when you see him on TV, he, he has a lot of energy that gets you excited. But when you see him in person, it's just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm right in front of you talking. And there's so many questions I had. I mean, he's a little bit shorter than he looks on TV, <laughs> but dude, his energy, he's like seven foot tall. He's, he's the man. I love him. Oh, that's very cool. I bet that locked you onto the show, right? When he saw that you were doing a surgery and he had to call you during that. Sure. Hey, I didn't know. I'm like, this is going to make or break. But one thing I never want to do is compromise patient care for the show. You know, I'm I'm a physician first and then a survivor last. So, you know, with certain things with applications, sometimes I had to put my foot down like, no, I'm in clinic. No, I'm in surgery. I can't do anything about this. So that was one of those tipping points where I'm like, I can't cancel the surgery. This guy needs it. So he can call and I'll just call him back. And it was fine. You know, he was like, yeah, call me back. I can't wait to talk about it. And that may have gotten me on the show, you know, who knows? I'm sure he's never been in the OR before, so. <laughs> yeah, I bet that makes you a lot more compelling than someone who is just begging and begging and begging to, to be called by the producers, probably. Yeah, I guess so, I guess so. That's cool. Um, one question, I, I asked uh, some of my friends who are fellow Survivor fans uh, some random questions that they had as well. And they asked, uh, how bad does everyone smell? And do you become unaware of it after a long time out there? <laughs> He definitely goes nose blind. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I think I went nose blind. Uh, geez, right into it. I don't really remember smelling people or I was the smelly one. <laughs> That's probably what it was. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, whew, you're not showering. I mean, the how we showered was in the ocean and just using sand to exfoliate as much as you can. Um, and sometimes the well water as well. Uh, but I was nose blind personally. But I'm sorry, anyone out there, if I smelled really bad. <laughs> Well, I wonder I'm if sure the uh, producer faded it. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if your podiatry training helped you with becoming nose blind to uh, all of the things that we're exposed to. <laughs> That's probably it, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> funny. Um, do you get covered in bug bites out there? Are you provided like sunscreen, bug spray, anything like that? Uh, no, not provided any of that. Wow. Absolutely not. You just have to use the water or use the sand, use some mud. <laughs> hey, that's it. That's Survivor. That's Survivor. You're surviving. Oh gosh. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask you too, um, at the point that you were voted out, it was before the jury part of the game. So what, what do you do, uh, with the people who were voted out at that phase? Is there, do you guys have to stay, um, in Fiji during that time until filming is over? Um, unfortunately not. No, we left, we went home, the pre-mergers went home, um, and post-mergers stayed, which I I hope they change at some point. (laughs) Yeah. That'd be a fun experience. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Right. (laughs) So I, I really have only one more question for you, I guess. Uh, would you approve of Dr. Jensen giving me a leave of absence to compete on Survivor if that, if that were to happen? I approve that. I, okay. I 100% approve that. Sounds <laughs> good. You heard it here, Dr. Jensen. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, I'll rubber stamp that for you. No problem. Sounds great. <laughs> well, that's another thing that we had to do, too. I couldn't tell anybody about this right. going through it. So I'm just talking to um, the casting director, like, okay, when can I tell my job? Like, I, I, I don't know what to do. And so what I did is said, I'm going on a leave of absence. Couldn't ask any questions. And I just talked to my my uh, boss and said, Hey, 
I still have a job when I get back, right? Like I need to do this. And he's like, yeah, yeah. Just we'll talk afterwards. And it was fine. And now he's amazed and we talk about it all the time. So yeah. <laughs> very good for business. I'm sure. <laughs> oh my gosh. Patients love it. Oh my God. Patients want to talk about more about survivor than about their feet. So. Yeah, I bet. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> Which is fine with me. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that's all the questions I have for you. I'm that was really fun to be able to talk to you today. Oh, absolutely. And I can't wait to see you up there next. I can't wait either. I'll get working on my next audition tape. <laughs> <laughs> so I have three questions um, as I've been listening to this. Tell me about this uh, audition tape. What does that entail? So the first audition tape, um, it had to be three minutes long and uninterrupted. You couldn't do any editing. And uh, what I was doing, it was right around um, end of December when I did this. My Christmas tree was still up. I was in my onesie drinking some wine with my cat. And I just started <laughs> recording. And I just started talking about my life, why I like Survivor, why it related to um survivor and what I was doing and why I was going to be a good contestant and what my day-to-day activities were and how that made me a a great castaway. And then um, after the first uh, video, they sent me an email saying, okay, we want more. Give us a five-minute video and go around like day-to-day life. And so that's when I could, you know, show them the OR, show them my clinic, um, show them what I do on my free time, which is off course races, working out, stuff like that. It's very cool. You're like yeah. real life Robinson Crusoe out there. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> wow, thank you. <laughs> so the next question I had for you, Joshua, is I like to go fishing. You know, I go up to Canada, catch walleyes and things, but we have the benefit of rods and reels and sharp hooks and things. How do you catch fish? Wow. So the there was two ways. One, you <laughs> could go out by yourself and just use your hands, which, I mean, doesn't work. No. So we had to win a spear where you basically kind of hooked it around your elbow and has three prongs that would go out and catch the fish. Now, um, we won a challenge to do that. Um, However, I wasn't able to go out and fish, unfortunately. And that's one of the things I regret because that's one of the things I wanted to do in my time of Survivor and check off my Survivor checklist. Um, But I was so, I was so exhausted. I had no energy that I couldn't make my way out there to do that. Because again, it was the caloric demand and kind of what you were doing. And I wanted to save my energy for the challenges so we could win. So we didn't have to go to tribal council. So I didn't have to have a risk of getting voted out. Um, so yeah, we had to use a, a spear basically. And it was oh. difficult. Oh, and yeah. you said it was hundreds of yards out there, right? To go fishing. It was about 500 yards out, like to get past the reef where it dropped off so that wow. you can find the fish. Hmm. That's so that was even exhausting. Like when we won, we won paddles and we won a um, a mask and then we won the actual three pronged. Uh, I'm having trouble with my words today. <laughs> the sling, I think. Yeah. The sling. Yes, yep. absolutely. And you just had to make your way out there. And it was just so demanding. Like when you get back, you're dead. So okay. Danny did all the fishing from our tribe in okay. Soka. Something tells me there's a learning curve to using that spear. <laughs> oh, yeah, there was. And I was practicing on, on coconuts beforehand because you had to wrap it around your elbow and then let it go and release it and make sure you're in proper distance of the fish. It was a lot. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, and as you know, too, people have lost the spear at the bottom of the ocean in seasons past. And, you know, that can get you voted out right away, too. <laughs> Quickly. Yes. So you're always playing the game. There's no rest. <laughs> there's no rest. <laughs> no. Wow. What a oh, yeah. Story. So I've got one uh, one more question for you, Joshua. What's next for Dr. Wilder? I mean, once you participate on Survivor, you know, I mean, it must just open up your world to other opportunities. Well, what's on, what, what's on your mind for the next five years? Oh, man. Right now, I'm just living life to the fullest. It's been great being an advocate for those who never thought that he could do this, just like me. You know, those who are um, POC, those who are queer, um, those who have had a kidney transplant or some kind of chronic illness. I've had a lot of parents and a lot of kids reach out via social media, just talking about their conditions and um, what I've done or wanted to talk to my parents and my family to see what they've done. And just watching me on TV has shown them what they can do. So it's been great reaching out to them. Um, I just recently purchased a house with my husband. So that's been a huge life goal. Um, And I plan on getting out there and advocating more for those like me. And I mean, who knows if Jeff calls or maybe the challenge or who knows, but right now I'm just kind of working on my practice, um, working on the house, (laughs) that big milestone and, uh, being an advocate doing anything I can. Oh, that's incredible. Um, 
I can see you being just a phenomenal mentor and role model to so many kids and so many transplant patients. And, and wow, um, I'm so glad we had the opportunity to bring you on the Dean's Chat, Joshua. Oh, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. This has been amazing. This is oh, fun. Absolutely. Absolutely. I would love to come back. Uh, we'd love to have you back. And, and Mark, you know, it's always good to have uh, another co-host in case I get in a pinch. You can come in and and, and host the show for me. Say less. Bring me back. All right. So, there you go. <laughs> sounds good. Well, on behalf of the entire profession, Joshua, I, I thank you for your contributions, uh, not only to our profession as a surgeon and a physician, but for representing our 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 profession on Survivor, man. Good job. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Wish I could have won the whole thing, but who knows? Maybe next time. Maybe next, next time. time. That's right. <laughs> right, you're right. Well, thank you again. And to all of our listeners out there, uh, this is going to be a really fun episode to listen to. If you're on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, please give us a five-star ranking rating. And if you're on YouTube, by all means, become a subscriber. Um, so this is our 35th episode, Joshua. And wow. it, it, this is the most unique episode we've done so far. So I thank you for being part of it. Of course. Thank you for having me again. I appreciate it. You're welcome. And to all of our uh, guests on Dean's Chat, uh, we send a nice little Dean's Chat cup. So I'll make sure we get one in the mail to you. And uh, until then, Mark, I've got one for you too, of course. Uh, so cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, we're good. Thank you. Oh my gosh, that was so good, you guys. That was awesome. That was awesome. <laughs> how, how long did it end up, James? It turned out right about 30 minutes as it turned out. Oh, nice. Very good. You know, Joshua, I can only imagine how it's affected your practice. I mean, I can it's had to have put it through the roof. It's booming. When I left, I had three different clinics just because I wanted to get busy enough so I can get my cases so I can um, post for boards. And now I have to go down to two because I'm so busy at my other offices oh. and doing surgery. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been great. <laughs> it's been great. You know, I got a hand at the CBS. They were very protective of your time and, you know, they were so professional. And um, I, I, Jennifer was so kind in putting this all together. And thank you for your patience. Because I know one time, Mark, I don't know if I told you this, but we had this scheduled and I got really sick and i was like mm. i didn't know what i had but i just wasn't feeling good and um so we kind of kicked the can down the road but time waits for no one here we are no no, no i appreciate it i thought you forgot about us but i'm glad you're feeling better though oh feeling i'm feeling great i you know just like everything i mean i you know you, i've got friends with covid still right now you know and um i've been able to avoid that but you know in arizona joshua we we didn't really shut down for covid at all but we've all gone through our cycles of catching something you know how that goes Oh, yeah. We're starting to get more surges here in Atlanta. It's coming back. It's not as severe, but the symptoms are coming. No, no doubt about it. All right. Well, I'll, I'll we'll let you go get, so you can get something to eat before you start patient about 15. <laughs> yeah, yeah a, little, a little granola bar here and there. Right. You will get a granola bar in your practice. You don't have to go catch not a fish. But... You don't have to go catch a fish for lunch or anything, do you? <laughs> That's true. No, that not thank God, not here. <laughs> All right. All right, Joshua. Thanks again. And Mark, as always, thanks. I appreciate yes, you. Yes, thanks for having uh, me. Great meeting you. Bye-bye, guys. Bye.